Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for joining me here today. I'm going to be answering some questions that I've got from you guys over the, I guess, the last few videos that I haven't got to. I'm making kind of a quick video kind of going through answering some of these questions. Um, and let's get right into it. So first question is what brand engaged strings do I use on my Les Pauls? So I actually just made a video going through, I was restringing the 59 reissue and when, you know, kind of my process and what strings I use. And I use Elixirs. I've been using Elixirs for, I don't know, 13 years, a very long time. And I am trying something new though. So on that guitar, I actually put nine to 42 gauge strings. What I do traditionally is 10 to 46, which is what's on this guitar. And um, I'm kind of enjoying the nine to 42. So I might slowly make a transition to nine to 42. Um, but usually I stick in that range. Um, it really depends on the tuning though, because I am a half step in this. That's to standard tuning. And uh, I haven't tried that a half step down with the nines, but I will try that out and see if it is like too kind of slinky or not. And if it is too slinky, I'll just kind of stick to the tens for that, for the half step kind of stuff. But I am liking the nines. Um, where can I sign up for lessons? So if you guys are interested in uh, online lessons, I do lessons over Zoom. Um, I usually have a link in the description of my videos. So if you're interested in lessons, I do give online Zoom lessons. You can just check out that link. Or you can send me an email to jordanmstillmusic at gmail.com. And I can send you all the information that you need for that. And if you're interested, we can get it set up. Um, favorite picks. Um, I did make a video talking about picks. This is my go-to pick for the last two or three years. It's a blue chip TD45. It's, um, it's a very expensive, it's like a, after tax, it's like a $40 pick. I like it. I like the sound. It doesn't wear. I like the full size of it. Um, and it's just kind of a very normal shape pick. And I kind of do like the challenge that, uh, the challenge of not losing it. <laughs> I find it fun to just try my hardest to not lose it. And like, literally, I've gigged tons of times where I've actually just brought up this one pick and I, I was like a challenge to not drop it or lose it and I do good. But now I usually, if I go to a gig, which I have a gig later, so I'll bring this as my main pick and then my backups, I bring two of these. I bring two flow, what are they? Tortex 1.14 millimeter. I bring those as my backup. Um, if it, you know, if I lose this one, which hopefully I don't ever lose this. Do you prefer 50s or 60s styles next on a Les Paul? On a Les Paul, I'm in the 50s kind of got category, but I have played, it's kind of, it's a really weird answer because the, you have the, like, the new like 50s and 60s standard. I definitely lean in the 50s of that, but if you get to the custom shop where you have like 56, 57, 58, 50, every year's different. And there's times I really enjoy the 56 and 57, and I guess 58, they're really, really fat necks. Um, but to me, it's for a certain feel. Like it's 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 not my go-to. It's to me, it's too fat. The fifty-nine, though, uh, at least mine, is in the sweet spot. It's it's nice and chunky, but it's not it's not um, like overly like a fifty-seven or fifty-six like that. So I like the fifty-nine. What speakers do I use? Um, that's a good question. So I have a in the hallway over there. Uh, I have a what is it? A nineteen sixty A cab Marshall. I don't know what the stock speakers are. I think there are 75 watt selections of some sort. Um, and so I just use that. I They're not my favorite speaker. I kind of want to change them. I really, uh, my speaker answer is not good because I really want to get some V30s or some greenbacks to try out. Um, I think I would like V30s um, the best. My other, my little 112 has a Celestion G12H, was it, is it? 70 anniversary or something. I think it's a 30 watt. It's it's really, I'm really impressed with that. For a 112, it sounds nice and it's very, very affordable. Do I have downloadable lessons? I don't have downloadable lessons. I have Patreon, which are, um, I kind of take different lesson ideas and I add tab or guitar profiles and sometimes backing tracks. I'm trying to do more backing tracks with the lessons. So you can go sign up on Patreon for like $3 a month, or $9 a month, and you get a whole bunch of extra lessons and tab and things like that along with that. So tips with alternate picking. The biggest thing to me, and I had I heard people say this for years, is be relaxed. And I 100% 100 think it's just being relaxed. If you can stay relaxed, it's going to be so much easier. It's going to be so much smoother um, in the process. Um, one thing I noticed with a, a student recently, and this is definitely something to like check out when you're playing. I just made a video talking about you know recording yourself, watching it back. 
you, I would record yourself doing this and watching back. A lot of people have no problem playing slow and they stay relaxed and comfortable and they speed up and there's this kind of mental thing that I need to get more tense. It's, it's, which it kind of makes sense, but it's not the reality of playing fast on guitar, especially with alternate picking. And what I noticed audibly is when my student was picking, he was doing, let's just say this pattern. Well, hold on, let me turn my, my sound on here. There we go. Oops, I got a lot of effects. I was turning that off. So when picking slow, let me see if you can hear my pick here. It's, it's very relaxed. Right, the picking motion is just. But when he would speed up, say we went like. Like we speed up, I don't know, twice as fast as that original one he would get super tense like this and a very aggressive sound like the pick you'd audibly hear a difference it would sound like instead of this let me do it without the sound there see how quiet this is when he would speed up though it would go like this right it would get very aggressive abrasive sounding which is not a bad thing if you're in control of that. I think it's great if you can control being super light and super aggressive, but it was a, it was a tension thing and it was holding him back on speed uh, and it was kind of throwing his picking motion off. And we um, have slowly been cracking down on that. And now he, he's doing the, the, like the faster speeds and he's maintaining that relaxed uh, pick thing. So I find that might be a kind of a audible hack. If you're hearing the pick get more aggressive while you're getting faster, um, that might be a sign of tension because it's kind of weird to feel tension at first. Um, this one is like creeping in, but you'll kind of learn over time what it feels like. And I find you'll notice most likely the pick getting louder, which is kind of a sign that it's, it's most likely more tension. The faster I go, the more relaxed it is. Like it's audibly, it gets quieter. Like if I'm playing super fast, it's like, this is how, this is literally how loud with my pick it is. Like if I'm going, if I was doing a run, say. Something like that, right? Out loud, it sounds like this. Right, it's very quiet. It's not. Now I could do that if I'd like to, because you know, I've slowly developed the control to do that because it's good to accent and have those different accent points, but don't be burdened and locked into the tension and on speed and tension. That's why I want to, the next question is how to build speed efficiently. I differ. The, the standard opinion is start slow, play it perfectly, and then slowly add like five BPM, go 10 BPM. Now, you know, you keep on building that every day or throughout the you kind of practice session. That's an option, right? I, I don't discount. I, I like to do both. And some people are have better progress with certain ways of practicing and some have better um, with other ways. Some people that they might excel perfectly with that. I didn't, I, I could only get tenser and tenser. Like if I slowly, if I started like 80 BPM and then I slowly bumped it up to 88 and I was at like 95 and I say I got to 115. 115 was so tense for some reason. Um, the only way I could get away from that tension in which tension to me stops speed is to trick myself to be relaxed. And how I did that was literally getting it down super slow um, you know, whatever the pattern was, if we took a run like this. Get that down, muscle memorized. Like one thing I recommend is before you ever start practicing speed is have whatever pattern or lick or whatever you're doing, have it down, like at a super slow speed where you're not guess, oh, is it this fret? Oh, am I supposed to pick it this way? If there's still that going on, you, you have no business trying to get faster, right? If you don't fundamentally have it down, perfectly, I don't believe that you should be pushing speed at all because then you're just be practicing the wrong way. However, once you got the scale shape, you're not questioning the scale shape, you know what fingers, you know the picking, like, you know. You have that, right? And it's completely muscle memorized. There's no questions that you can, fl even if it's slow, you know, even if it's this slow, I don't care. Right, say it's that slow. After it's locked in though, I say, I usually go mat, like max speed or over, like say the fastest you can even get your hand to move is like, I don't know, 130 BPM, 16 no triplets, right? Say it's that. I say jump up to that speed or faster 
and let it be sloppy. Let that, as long as you fundamentally know what you're supposed to be doing, go super fast and be totally okay with it being sloppy. Like have no expectation that it's clean in any way. And then also there's another thing with speed and getting things down. I see a lot of students say, this was the run. This is the whole run. I'll ask them to play it, right? Um, and you know, even if it's slower, like say it's at that speed. Well, say by the time they get to the G string, they mess something up or they realize their picking's off. They instantly go back and they restart. They're like, oh, I messed up there and they'll restart. Also, you need to kind of develop in your practice that there's just a, there gotta be a mindset that you have to push through because the, the, the reality, you could sit down and do that for an hour and you might run through the whole lick like five times. Like if you're always stopping and restarting, in reality, you practice the lick. Like if this is the lick, all right, that's the whole lick. If you're always stopping here, oh, I messed up, I gotta restart. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I messed up. Oh, I did it wrong. Like if you're always doing that, you could sit down for 10 hours, right? You're not gonna get that. You didn't, in reality, in 10 hours, you practiced that exercise or lick zero times, at least in the way I count it. I don't, if you didn't play the whole thing, you it's zero practice. You just wasted 10 hours. You gotta have it down fundamentally. And then when it's time to push speed, go super, super fast, like way faster than you can do. All right, I'm not even, I'm not warmed up, so that's a little sloppy for my hands. Right, I'm gonna try to get as sloppy as I can because I need to push speed. See, it's sloppy, like it's not clean there. It's a little better. I missed a few notes there. But the point is you gotta always push uh, push through. I think about if I was playing live, right, and I need to do this run or I was playing a solo, a pre-written solo or whatever, I can't be like, oh, I messed that note up, I need to restart. Can we restart back at the beginning? Like, you can't do it, you gotta push through. And so the same thing in the, in, when you're practicing. So I hope that answers a lot of these questions. And if you have any more questions for me that you're curious about, uh, put it down in the comments below and um, I'll either answer it in the comments or I'll make another video kind of answering that for you guys.